Hey guys, well, we're just at my buddy's place here and uh, just picking up my quads. I'm gonna bring them over to my dad's place and him and I were gonna go for a ride. He's never been on a quad before, so we're gonna see where uh, this adventure takes us. <laughs> Could be interesting. Maybe I'll get some footage in the bush and we'll go from there. But they're on my trailer now. I gotta get them home. I gotta do a little bit of checking on the on both the quads you know oil and stuff like that the yellow one i need to uh clean out the oil cooler uh radiator and uh, go from there okay we'll catch you in a bit Okay, well, got the quads home, and I've already checked the red one. The oil cooler fins are nice and clear, but the yellow one... There's a little bit of mud built up in there. That is not very good for cooling. But these are Honda Foremans, 450, both of them. Uh, this one's a 2001, the red one is a 99. Uh, they are air-cooled, but they do have a little rad there for the oil cooler. Helps keep the internals working fine, so I'm just going to run a garden hose. Wash some of that mud out of there. You don't want to uh, get too high pressure. You don't want to bend any fins and cause yourself grief, so we'll get that taken care of and uh, make sure the tires are aired up, the tanks are gassed up, and we should be good to go. Well, I got the cooler hose out, so it looks a lot better now. No more big clumps of mud. Should be enough cooling. It'll be all right. Air flows through there. The fan's good. So, a couple of things you just got to check before you ride your bikes. Oil level, fuel level. Check for little things like that, cooling. And uh, if you do those little things, the bikes will last a lot longer. So we were out for our ride. Dad enjoyed himself. First time he'd been on a quad. It was great. He was having fun. And he got stuck in the first mud puddle we got to. I was leading the pack and I went flying through the mud and he got stuck and I jumped off my bike to go have a look see what's going on and uh, I noticed that the front wheels weren't spinning on this uh, this Honda Foreman. And these are full time four wheel drive so that front axle should be live all the time but uh, for some reason he had no no front axle action so I had a look while the tires were spinning in the mud and I found this I could see the half shaft turning with a blown boot on it the half shaft was turning but the inner CV joint was knocked well that's just not gonna do so something has let go inside the inner CV joint. In the interest of saving time, the other boot's bad, it's got mud, it's got water, it's got junk in it, the inside joint is no good. So I ended up picking up uh, just a whole new shaft from our local power sports place, Royal Distributing. And uh, we're going to go through the process of changing this side out. I also bought uh, inner and outer CV boots for the other axle. Uh, the joints are fine on the other front axle. I'm just going to change the boots. One is split. One just split on us uh, on the weekend. So there's nothing in there. There's there's no junk. It's just full of grease. Uh, I'm just going to put a set of boots on that side and call that done. Maybe I'll fix up this mangled skid plate at the same time. Okay, here's where we're at. I took the lower shock bolt out so I can swing that out of the way. Just going to use a bungee cord here, hook it in the eye. I'm going to strap it up here to the just to the racks, keep it out of the way. I don't have to be concerned with tearing boots or or getting any you know damage done to the axle here. I'm replacing the entire shaft, so it doesn't really matter. So. The outside spindle nut 
It's got a cotter pin in it. Pop the cotter pin out. I use an impact gun to get this off. They can be tight. Sometimes you'll need somebody holding the brakes and all kinds of stuff to get these these nuts off because they can get on there pretty tight. But I just use an impact gun. It pops right off easy. I'm going to leave everything here. Leave the hub. I'm going to leave the ball joints all together. Leave all that stuff in one unit. <coughs> what I did was I took both bolts out of the lower control arm at the frame. So shaft spindle is loose in the hub here that's fine I'm gonna lift it up wiggle that lower control arm out of there there we go and that shaft should come right out there we are that's a mess okay because that joint is all broken apart in there I can't just snap it out of the front diff I'm just gonna use a little pry bar or screwdriver in behind there and Give it a sharp little pop, see if it comes out. See if I can get that in there. There we go. Popped right out. See, it looks okay. No tears in it. There wasn't even any sweating there, so. I should be okay just pop that new shaft in there. I'm going to put a little bit of reach in there, get, grab some diff oil and just put it on that seal surface. There we go. Just give the surface a little bit of lubrication so it doesn't sit on that dry seal and tear it out. Okay. That lined up in there. I'll try and get these a pop in straight. There we go. There is a seal on the back of this hub. I've already checked that off camera. It's pretty good. Keeps the keeps the dust out. Looks okay. Okay, so we're right there. What I'm gonna do is just loosely thread the nut on so the outer CV joint doesn't try and pull out of the hub. Just a couple of threads, just so it doesn't fall all the way out. They're still going to be able to work the bottom control arm. Get it back in the spots. That's all right. Here we go. Get the bolt holes lined up. Get the back one lined up maybe a little better. Oh yeah, it's out too. Little persuasion. There we are. One in. Two in. I'm just going to thread the fasteners loose for now. Make sure that CV joint is sitting all the way into the hub. It is. That's good. Lower our shock back down. Get that fastener back in there. Beautiful. Pretty straightforward actually. None of this stuff needs to be gorilla tight. Good and snug. These are self-locking nuts. They're like a crush nut. So, a little bit of torque is enough. They're not gonna go anywhere. There we are. So that shaft was about $159. Canadian. I wasn't gonna change two joints and two boots individually for 159 bucks. A lot less labor just hanging a new shaft in there. There we are. Yeah. Okay, that's all good. 
sure there's a torque spec on this nut. I don't have it off the top of my head. Just noticed something strange about the new nut that was, uh, that was supplied with it. You can see here, the old nut is much taller. Also has a flange on the bottom of it. If I were to use this nut, what will happen is the hole for the cotter pin will be outside of the castellated part. So the cotter pin will do nothing. So I'm going to reuse the old one. Threads are the same. I'll reuse the old nut, put a new cotter pin in it. That should be good. Use that new cotter pin in there. Always use a new cotter pin. They are not expensive. Cheap insurance, keep it going. Nothing falls out. Won't give you grief. That's good to go. That's much better now. Okay. Well, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up taking this apart. I wanna see what failed in it. I also have to go to the other axle shaft. I'm gonna pull the shaft out. I'm going to set everything up on the bench and I'm going to change the boots on that. So I'm going to uh, pause this one for now and get reset up on the other side. Okay, so I got the other side out, got the other shaft out of the right side. The left side, new shaft is all put in, everything's tightened down, ready to go. Uh, the joints on this side are nice and smooth, everything's good. The way you check for wear on the inside joint, because this one does move in and out, is you put a little bit of torque on the cup itself. Just a little. You want it to be able to slide still. But you push it all the way in or out. With You start in or out, put a little bit of rotational torque on it, and you gently slide it in and out of the grooves. And what you're doing is you're seeing if one of the balls in here, or all the balls, have worn a groove into the side of that channel. This one's nice and smooth. I, I don't believe this is the original shaft. I think this has been replaced at one point. Get you a bit of a close-up on that. There we go. It's hard to see, but it's right on the top edge there. Use a little pick, pull it out. That little ring is what stops that joint from falling all the way apart like that. So, have a look in there. Yeah, there's no grooves on the on those slides, so this should be okay. I'm going to clean this up. Um, to replace the boots, we don't need to take the outer joint off. This is the inner. We don't need to take the outer joint apart or off or anything. We're just going to uh, do quite a few uh, minutes of cleanup here to s make sure we try and get as much of the old grease out as we can. One of the balls just fell out of there, so we'll get this uh, all apart, cleaned up, mo remove most of the grease because the new boots come with uh, new grease packages. And we want to get rid of as much of the old grease as we can. Here we go. That's off. Cage should slide up. I'm going to have to take the end of this off as well. The cage is up. There is a circlip on the bottom here. A little snap ring that I've got to take off. I'm going to leave this off to the side, this mucky mess. Six balls. That's kind of interesting, actually. Most cars that I've seen, GM cars anyways, they only have three. 
there's only three on the inside they're not actually a ball it's a, it's a roller it's a similar idea just a different uh, execution of the design so okay we're gonna get these cleaned up and I'll get the uh, circlip off of there and we'll get the camera fired up and go over the process okay so what I've done here is I've cleaned most of the grease off that I can get off it's not critical if it was contaminated then it would be more of a candidate for a parts wash or a brake clean or something there's no rust and water and stuff in this joint it's it's fine no sand in it so I've got the snap ring off the end we'll pull this piece off I'm going to make sure that I put it on the bench in the same relative direction that I took it off I don't even need to this one's different from top to bottom so it only will fit on one way okay set that down we'll get the cage off of there once we get the inner joint off then we can work on putting the boot on the outer joint just flip the shaft over so we'll get this one clean a little bit I've removed most of the grease out of everything just to get the new stuff in there these two surfaces are critical to be clean and dry you don't want any grease or oil or anything on these this is the groove here and here where the boot gets clamped to if there's grease or anything underneath there it'll allow the boot to slide on the joint and it'll pop right off it's not going to stay on there it's smooth this is the one that does most of the extreme turning rotational like this the inside one is more of an in and out motion so let's get our boot ready we're going to want to use all the grease that comes in the package that was a little grease pack you don't want to try and get about a third to go into the joint itself and the other two thirds will go in the boot okay so I'm gonna inject it into the joint get as much in there as I can about a third see if I can get see if I can get it to go down to the bottom of the joint somewhere oh yeah it's filling up now it's just a matter of filling up the top I've got a bunch that went down inside so I'm gonna clamp it on the splines here I just gotta grab my soft jaws These are aluminum jaws faced with rubber. The little magnets in behind there to hold them to the vise. That'll make it a little easier. Just keep piling it up on there, make a little pyramid. And we'll slide our boot over. Try not to scoop up any grease on the way down. Here we are. Sure there's no grease anywhere? It looks alright. Looks okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to clamp that down using the supplied clamps comes with it. Okay, so we've got the band and the tool ready. Make sure the boot is sitting in the groove that it's supposed to be, and it is. Run this down just a little bit. It's easier if you get them started with hand, just with your hands before you get the tool involved, because that can be a little finicky. So it's pretty close there. Let's get that little bend so it doesn't undo on us. Let's get you a better angle here. Okay. So this banding tool. You thread the band, There's a, this is a cutter, you thread the band through the cutter into this winding device, it's got a little slot in it, and you tension it up, we'll bend it over, and then cut it off. Okay, I could cut some of the excess off before I get into this, but it's fine. Okay, so you want to snug this down, doesn't have to be too tight, you don't want to cut the boot. 
you don't want it to spit out from underneath anywhere so just get a little bit of tension on it you can just see the the boot starting to flex there a little bit of torque we'll bend this over and then when you use the built-in cutter cut it off this point let's grab our hammer and a punch and we'll tap that down nice and flat bend these little tabs over There we go. One thing I should, should mention while I'm here, the orientation of the clamp, which direction this tab ends up is important. Uh, I didn't mention it while I was putting it on, but this is the right side shaft. This is the outer joint. So this joint, in the, when the quad's moving forward, spins, goes in this direction. So as it's going in this direction, any debris or sticks or stones or whatever you come across you want it to come onto the bent side of this clamp you don't want it to get on the tail if it hits the bent side you've got a much better chance of keeping that band clamp on there if it comes on this side there is a chance it'll grab that pick it out of there and then the boot will just fall off so that's an important consideration when you're putting your boots on okay so we're going to put the top clamp on get you a little better angle again this joint does not move in and out it's pretty stationary so you want to grab a pick or a small screwdriver you just tuck it in there and what you're doing is you're equalizing the pressure you're letting air in or out whatever case it needs it'll figure itself out you just don't want there to be a vacuum or pressure in here so the air is now out I can put that outer clamp on start I'll just start tensioning it up just to see a little bit of swell here to know you have a clamp load on it that looks good fold it over and cut it off or not cut it off there we go I'm going to use a little pair of tin snips and I'm going to just snip that off. There we go. Nice and snug. That is not going anywhere. The boot doesn't want to turn. We're good. Okay, I'm going to reset here and we'll get um, the inner joint. Uh, assembled we'll get the grease in it because we still have to deal with the splines and everything up here
looks good. Joint feels good. Outer joint feels fine. Got new grease and everything. I know these joints are not going to last forever now. Uh, at least I know what I'm dealing with. Okay, we're going to shut this one down. Thanks for joining me, and uh, I will catch you in the next one.